Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima, and I wanted to go back and have a quick look at the origins of Gundam Breaker and see where it came from, because Gundam Breaker 3 would be nowhere near as good as it is if they didn't have a little bit of room to experiment with it. And therefore, Gundam Breaker 1 is the subject of today's video. We're going to be taking a look around it, not as in-depth as the Gundam Breaker 3 videos, but they are still going to be, this is still going to be, just a little bit more in-depth. This is my own personal save game with about 37 hours in it, and I've almost completed it. I've managed to do every mission except I believe 91 and 99, and I do believe it would be possible to do those. So it's got a couple of unique things going on for it, although the shop is no different. It does have the ability to go and buy stuff online if you're in the right region, but in this case that is not the case. So he just says, hi, you want to buy something? And you do have the opportunity to come along and buy parts here, but... The progression of Gundam Breaker actually works a lot differently in comparison to Gundam Breaker 3. So a lot of those are actually completely useless after a certain period of time. Because as you can see in the bottom right, I have about 25 million GP and I've got nothing to spend it on. Once you've bought all the option equipment, you can only swap out of the costumes in the same way and buy a few camouflage patterns and that's pretty much it. You can of course also sell the parts off that you have. But we're not going to worry about that right now. It's also worth noting that this game had this email system where it would give you hints on what you were able to do, how some of the gameplay mechanics worked, and whether or not there would be something new for you to buy in the shop. Although, again, it's almost completely irrelevant due to the way progression works in this game. It does work pretty much in the same way as Gundam Breaker 3, but the way that the items themselves are identified and how their power levels work is completely separate. So let's just go hop into the VR hangar, just like in Gundam Breaker 3. Although this has always been my personal favorite VR hangar, just because of how cool it looks. Just the massive catwalks, the just general not big open space, but a more compressed, interesting area with some great color decisions going on. I enjoy it a lot more, even if most of it is just empty space, just like the rest of them. It's a shame you can't go up on those catwalks either, but I guess that's just the way it is. So let's go explain how progression works in this game and how building works in this game, because it's actually significantly different. You can see down the bottom right that we have a weapons aptitude area, and weapon aptitude is determined by the parts that you've got on. Like, for example, the head that I've got on now gives me four or five aptitude to my sa to my saber skill. And if I go and change the head, you can see how that works. You can see that I've lost a few bars there, but I've gained a few bars in other areas. All of those things are your weaponry. So the top is all your melee weapons, and the bottom is all your ranged weapons. And the idea is you've got to build your Gunpla specs around that. You've got to build it around giving yourself as much attack power as possible. And that makes things interesting, because not only is your attack power affected, all your other stats are obviously affected as well. So you need to find the right combination of armor that will give you the most stats in both your health, your two resistances, that's physical and beam, your shield strength, your attacks with your physical weapon and your ranged weapon, and your capacity and your total capacity and how much you've got on you right now, because parts have individual uh, weights. So as you can see here, I can take away a lot of my capacity, but I'll only lose some of my capacity there and I'll be overweight, and that'll make me less effective. I won't be able to go out and do much in the field, as it were. But you might have also noticed all of these stars next to these parts here. Those are the quality of these parts, and quality of parts is actually determined in a somewhat unusual way. So when you go to parts build, you've got your parts here, sorted by their grades. You can see that they are, they are very similar to Gun and Breaker 3. It goes uh, white, green, blue, red, uh, purple, then red, then yellow. So when you select a purple one to build, you'll see that you'll get a few stars on it. These stars determine how powerful the equipment is. And the higher the grade of the part you're building that you found, the more stars you're likely to get. It's not guaranteed, but you are more likely to get a higher amount of stars. So I've got a pair of yellow legs here, and as you can see, 
up to eight stars. This does also work the same way as Gundam Breaker 2 and 3, where MG parts are higher quality than HG parts, and you'll just eventually swap to nothing but hate to MGs. So that's what the gold stars are. Gold stars are all MG parts, then the silver stars are all HG parts, but a part that is a part that is more stars in HG might actually be better than a low star HG, uh, a low star MG, I should say. But a high star MG is always going to be better than a high star HG. So it's the same sort of progression. You go through your HG parts and you upgrade to your MG parts. But of course, this doesn't come with the same flexibility. Because say I wanted to do, say, the Crossbone X1. I wanted to just use the X1 through everything. Well, do I have the an X1, for example, here? X1, 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 come on. As you can see, there are a lot of parts here. You are capable of selling off the parts that you don't want, and they do give you a, shop, uh, a shortcut for this. But no, I guess I don't have a Crossbone X1 head. But say I wanted to be a Gundam X, but for whatever reason, I also wanted to use Dual Sabers. Because the aptitude doesn't work for me in the same way, I'm not going to be using my maximum potential. So it's this weird combination of making a Gunpla that you like, while at the same time also making sure that your weapon aptitude is up to snuff. And... You need your weapon have to do to be up to snuff, especially in the later stages. Because if it's not, you're not going to be dealing damage fast enough and you're going to fucking die. Because in the later stages of Gundam Breaker, especially ones that they added post-patch, it's incredibly difficult to stay alive under more than a couple of attacks. Even if you've got your uh, Gunpla specs maxed out like I have. Well, not even maxed out, but this is like the best I could do with the parts I had available to me. You've also got three EX slots and not four because they've rebounded how dodging works. Or should I say they rebounded in Gundam Breaker 3. We'll get to that. You do also have your option equipment, six slots instead of eight. And of course, it's determined by the parts that you've got. And notably, the higher quality of the parts that you've got, the higher damage these will do. And again, do not neglect these. You can last entirely off option equipment and a bunch of good modules. But we'll get to how modules work in a bit. And of course, you've got your standard parts. Your head, your body, your arms, your legs, your backpack, and your shield. And they all break off in exactly the same way they do, do as in 3. And there you go. You've got a few different types. You've got your two-handed swords, your sabers, double sabers, and regular sabers are under the same category in this one. Lances, whips, and that's pretty much it. There are a couple of weapon types that aren't in this. But they all do have their own benefits. We're only going to be showing off one mission of Gundam Breaker, th uh, Gundam Breaker 1, I should say, in this one. But Two-Handed Sword is slow, but it does a ton of damage and is pretty good at breaking parts apart. The Double Saber, which is what I prefer for the majority of Gundam Breaker, is that it doesn't do much in the way of damage, but it can get out a lot of attacks at once, and it's got a lot of horizontal range across your viewpoint. So it's very useful for getting groups together and being the crap out of them. Saber is your best at everything. Uh, Lance is really good at being a decently long-ranged thing with a lot of thrusts. And Whip does a uh, fair few other things. I never liked Whips in this game. And Axes are just stronger Sabers. But again, when they're stronger, they're slower. I still prefer my good old Twin Sabers for this one because of the area of effect. And Modules are something that were in Gundam Breaker 1 and Gundam Breaker 2, but were taken out in Gundam Breaker 3 to exchange for cubes and these basically give you extra benefits and these can be anything from simple things like extra resistances to beam and physical damage and this will also make i believe uh awakening charge up five percent faster and this one awakening charge uh ex actions charge ten percent quicker this one is you get 0.75 percent of your health back per second Plus, every hit that you deal gives you 10% back of the damage that you dealt. This one here is resistances, uh, is health up by 5,000 and also 0.75% of your health comes back. This one's interesting and completely cancels knockback and stagger. So you can just tank as many hits as you want and continue on. And this one here speeds up your craft considerably. So it's not just like regular stat increases. There are definitely ones that are more out there. And you might also notice down there you've got your OS version. That's basically your build breaking version or build breaker rank, whatever they call it in Gundam Breaker 3. But it also means that it locks out certain parts from you. So you can see here that certain parts have 
required OS versions and you need your OS to be that high of a level. It's also worth noting that you can't hold eight modules by default. You start out with, I believe it's two, but the more you level up your OS version, the more of these slots you get. It's also worth noting that you've got a entirely separate build rank and this build rank determines what parts you can build. It's also worth noting that there are some unique parts you can get only in this game by scratch building. You come over to the scratch tab, you pick a part, you pick the part you want it to turn into. And there you go, you've got that part. And there are some parts that you can only get via this method. But, but basically it just turns into more or less, go over to your scratch, build everything that's there, then come back here, hit start and hit circle. And it will build all of the parts for you. Then you just hold circle to go through all of them. It tends to show you some. I can't figure out any rhyme or reason for the parts it likes to show you here. Because I have way more than like the parts is eventually going to show me. I've got way more than nine parts in that list, right? But it only showed me nine parts. So I've never quite figured out what they intended with that. You do also have the ability to put parts in stock, which means that they won't be treated as part of the normal list in case there are parts you like want to hold on to. But in this game, that really isn't relevant because again, you want to be aiming for the parts that have the highest stars. So if you've got a part with low stars, you might as well just put it away unless you're trying to do, unless you're trying to use this game as a Gunpla builder more than a Gunpla battler, then you still got that choice. Because as you can see, you've still got a fair few options related to all of that here. All of the different kinds of textures that you can apply to your Gundam are here. To make it look like it's had the absolute bejesus beat out of it. And of course, you can do this individually per part. And you can individually change all of the colors of individual parts or the entire thing. It's pretty basic, I, I grant you that. But again, Gundam Breaker 1, early days. You can, of course, also save and load particular builds if you so desire. As you can see here, I built myself an Astray Red Frame and a HG Unicorn Gundam. But again, just due to the way that building Gunpla works in this game, it's not really about find, making your favorite and then enhancing your favorite as you go along. It's all about getting the right combination of parts and using that to get through the stages because this game's stages can get a bit iffy. So let's go hop in and show you what I mean. We've got here 100 stages. We can't get to stages 1 and 2 because they're tutorial stages. They come up as part of the main story. It's worth noting that Gundam Break originally only started out with something like 60 missions, so it only ever went up to about here. But then they added patches and those patches added these plus missions which were brand new to the game's layout and then it added missions after mission 60 and it goes all the way up here to mission 100. And it's also worth noting that the Vita version of this game didn't actually come out at the same time as the original PS3 version. It came out like a year later so we actually got most of this stuff here out of the box. Which is great. Nothing particularly wrong with that. There are multiple different kinds of missions. I won't be showing them all off in this video because I don't want this to be another hour and a half behemoth like the first episode was. I'll just go through all the basics. So you've got normal missions, which are either go through a set of missions, or go through a set of areas, defeat all the enemies that show up and you're done. You've got survival, which is that, but you've got to live throughout the entire mission. You can't die once. Pretty simple. Defend, you've got some cores, defend them from enemy attacks. Team attack, which is putting you and three AI assistants up against three AI, uh, four AI enemies. And that's pretty much it, except for area raid, which is a bunch of areas laid out. You've got to go stand in them and make sure the enemies can't get into them. And it continues on like that. This game does have a story, but this game never released in English. It only ever released in Japanese, so I don't know it. But the, the entire concept seems to be something along the lines of the game... Uh, there is a story as part of the game itself. It's like uh, you go into the VR 
you go into the VR headset or whatever, then you play through this story that was programmed into the game itself, and then there's this entire thing around the outside going on, but there is next to no focus on that, because it's just, that's just how it works. With that said, let's go play a survival mission. Number 92, I guess, is the one we're going to be playing. I'm probably going to fail, because it's been a while since I've played this, but yeah. Thankfully, we can also come over here and actually change who our AI guys are, if we so desire, but we have to load them from our own builds. Kind of sucks, but it also means that you can carry around like three or four of your own dudes. Shame I can't take like his build and give it to myself, but sure, whatever. It's also worth noting that the uh, AI companions in this are actually the companions with different AI personalities. They can and will behave differently if you uh, if they get the opportunity. Uh, the one I know in particular is the girl called Ayako Flow in English for some reason. She tends to have, uh, brain work with me here, she tends to have a lot of healing skills, so she'll always be healing you up. She's actually a good teammate to have along on most missions, but you can't swap out the AI, you can only swap out the machines they're riding. So you walk up to a guy, or should I say yourself, press square, and the timer starts counting down, and you eventually get launched in. This game, of course, also has the launch sequences, and it does have local multiplayer and online multiplayer, but both of them are pretty much dead. They worked pretty well at the time, though. It's even got the same little thing on the loading screen with all the controls. And you can see them all, all the buttons when they're being pushed down. Still manages to be cute like that. See, here we go. So Gundam Breaker 1 does pretty much work in the same way. A lot of the controls are the same. A lot of the mechanics are the same. But there are a few things that are worth noting. For example, that. Heroic finish bonus. Under no circumstances should you ignore the heroic finish bonus. It's an EX action that you get at the very beginning of the game. And whenever you use it, it doubles the ace points it got banked up. You can see there that... I've done a certain amount of damage or something along those lines going on there. And you can build up massive combos of these, especially at the beginning of most missions. Because there are a lot of like low level ones that you can get, right? That all stack up really quickly because you've like done a ton of damage, you've wiped out a bunch of enemies in one go. Things along those lines. They build up really quickly, and when you use your heroic finish, not only does it double the ace points that you get, it also doubles the awakening gauge gauge amount that you get. So if you get like 46,000 right off the bat, and then use the heroic finish to double it, you can go into awakening almost immediately. I, of course, was waiting for these bastards to turn up before I did that, because, man, these guys are bloody dangerous. It does, of course, bring along the other regular Gundams that you've got here, but it doesn't have the whole thing going for it where it's like other players. It's pretty much always just like perfect grades or something all the time like that, right? There's no other players in the simulation. It's all just kind of like regular old Gundams or perfect grade Gundams. I'll show off a couple of them if we don't get to see any. Attacks are heavier? And the bindings have changed a little bit. You have to guard and then press the X button to step, which means you've only got your three EX actions. Which means if you do my traditional method of making sure you've always got a regenerating heal and making sure that you've got heroic finish so that you can always build up your awakening meter faster, you kind of end up with only having one EX slot. Which means you, you're kind of screwed if you're looking for a little bit of... Whoops. Which means you're kind of screwed if you're looking for a little bit of variety. And that kind of sucks. You do also have bastards like this Gundam Max in the background here. Just constantly beating the crap out of you with the satellite cannon. I know that all too well because it was like the one item that everyone recommended that you get your hands on as you uh, got up to the later stages. I will tell you that... Gundam Breaker can be fucking hard, especially in the later stages. 
but with a bit of grinding with a bit of grinding a bit of perseverance and just some general uh, skill at the game you can actually get to the end of most stages just fine solo it takes a little bit of work there's this one stage in particular stage 91 where you have to be really quick on your feet and there's just a boring like 10 minute grind but it's all possible unlike me being able to not prove that by getting the shit kicked out of me there but yes I just failed but thankfully I actually get to keep all the parts I brought with me the nice thing about survival stages is that well, I didn't even get any parts, damn it. Uh, the nice thing about survival stages, though, is that you get to keep everything you keep up to that point. If you die on a normal stage, it co it costs you a part at the end of the level. This can screw you more than a couple of times. We're going to play Mission 99 just so I can show you a little bit of some perfect grade Gundams going around the place. It's the easiest mission I know of to do so. I'm probably also going to get wrecked, though. Let's just skip the thing here. Ranged weapons work differently. You've got to hold the L button and then use square and triangle to use the two different attacks. It is also worth noting that all of the weapon sets have changed significantly between now and Gun to Breaker 3. Kind of the reason why I main Double Saber in this game, but not in any others. Because Double Saber in the other games is kind of crap, all things considered. It's great if you want to be incredibly fast, but it doesn't maintain the whole bullshit it doesn't maintain the whole uh, attacks over a wide area sort of thing here's your perfect raid by the way so it's kind of hard to use in Gundam Breaker 3 if you're a fan of Gundam Breaker 1 and you liked how it worked there another downside of Gundam Breaker 1 over Gundam Breaker 3 is that they use these PG models a lot more not to mention they're a fair bit smaller. So the, the actual problem though, is that they all have very similar sets of attacks. It's gonna be a giant beam, a melee attack, or melee combo I should say, or flying everywhere and firing like shots from the sky. There are very few like perfect raids that have proper, there are very few perfect raids that have proper actual move sets of their own and don't see see that three hit melee combo there that's going to be something you're seeing a lot but again with the introduction of uh like say other bosses in Gundam Breaker 3 you'll see in chapter 3 if that video hasn't gone up yet you'll see how they really vary it up when it comes to the boss design but here the biggest threat you're going to be facing is one of those perfect grades in multiple different forms and now you get to see a couple more. You know what the funny thing is? That Gundam that I'm currently locked onto, I actually have that. That's a special paint color that was like a limited production run, and I actually have the box of that in in my cupboard. I'm gonna have to do that in, my, in the video I plan on actually building a Gunpla. However, there are some things that this game has over the top of Gundam Breaker 2 of all things, like being able to actually hit shielded enemies without being staggered back all the time. Having the attacks feel a fair bit more heavy. Gundam Breaker 3 found a pretty good balance, but I've always preferred the hit feel in this one. And yeah, I just got the shit beat out of me. But you can see what I mean. It is quite difficult. I have made it close to the end of this mission before, and I have clearly finished mission 92. It is just quite hard. There is a reason why they recommend the satellite cannon. It means you can get the fuck out of the way while everybody else does the work for you. But this doesn't actually work to your benefit. As I will show now, I suppose, because this video isn't even half an hour. Might as well go do a team attack. We'll do the master builder's team attack. Why not? But really, all you need to do is just grind up a bit. Get your stats higher. Get a few modules that'll get you, like, some really high resistances. 
and then try and beat the hell out of those higher stages and you can do them completely solo. Which is really funny because even as far back as Gundam Breaker 1, they've always sold luck boosters as paid microtransactions, which will give you more parts. But you really don't need them that much. I mean, sure, if you want to have, like, all the parts come to you all at once, sure, spend a bit of money. But you don't need the paid microtransactions in order to actually get shit done. Like, it's not a benefit that they're there, but they don't get in the way that much either, so I'm really not that um, annoyed by them. Gundam Breaker 1 is still pretty good, though. I've heard a couple of people call it outdated. And, like, I can kind of agree. And I'm not going to say that it's the best Gundam Breaker to start with because it's so heavily focused on making a good build and not making the gunpla that you want. You do have to deal with a bunch of stuff. Here's what Awakening looks like, by the way. There's no burst EX action yet, so you can't really just tap on that. The best thing to do is to just use the fastest, strongest set of attacks you've got and then just chain them and pray for the best. Although you don't really have to pray if you're good enough. But a lot of the things in Gundam Breaker 2 and Gundam Breaker 3 that work are established here. The cool EX actions, being able to swap out any part that you like, having access to a lot of different gunpla. There's not actually that many in this game, there's only like 50, but they're all really recognizable ones, like your wings and your destinies and your RX-78s and your Astrays. All of the really big ones that the casual Gundam fan would know of are all here in some fashion. And as a result, it still has a good set of parts for you to find. It still has a decent amount of customization. Clearly it would take a while to get some things working, but it was a really good start to the point where I actually prefer playing this over Gundam Breaker 2. Because Gundam Breaker 2 is just a little weird. Like, Gundam Breaker 1 feels so significantly different. Oh yeah, you have to stand still and hold the shield button to actually get your parts back in this one. They aren't automatically drawn in. That can suck. Especially when your, your head goes missing and you have to fight your way out of a situation like this. Where's my fucking head? There we go. You can also, of course, just walk over to them. But yeah, Gundam Breaker 3, really, it's its own beast. It almost plays like a completely different game. If it wasn't for the fact that, like, uh, you, you're meant to, like, be able to swap out all the parts that you want, you just end up looking a bit, um... What's the word I'm looking for? It... You look, end up looking a bit silly in order to get a reasonable build going on. But the gameplay is still as good as it ever was. There's a lot of missions, a lot of parts, and the grinding system, while a bit weird in that it's kind of randomized as to how good the part is and you won't find out until you get it back, it still works well enough. And it's definitely hard. Which is the best part about it, if I'm being honest with you. Because it means it gives the game a fair bit of longevity. And they do eventually get around to duplicating that in Gundam Breaker 3's higher difficulties. While still maintaining the ability to get through the campaign, even if you're just a casual. Which, I mean, to be fair, it's a win-win in my opinion. Let the hard people beat themselves up on the higher difficulties and let the casuals just play through once and never pick up the game again, or just use it as a Gunpla building tool. This, more or less, is just a game. It's a hack and slash game with RPG elements. It's, it's a Diablo-style dungeon crawler, but you can swap out parts with other parts from a giant robot series that's got, like, 30 different iterations. And it works more than well enough. And I still appreciate it to this day. It's even pretty easy to play. Because all you really need to worry about is whether or not your number's going up and down and what uh, um, option equipment that you've got on hand. So, even if you're only playing this like and you don't speak Japanese, it's still pretty easy to play. Still pretty easy to have fun with. 
And as a result, when Gundam Breaker, when time came for Gundam Breaker 2, they felt the need to expand it. Kinda got it wrong, but that's worth an entire video of its own. It, Gundam Breaker 2 is still a good game, it's just weird. We'll get to how and why in a bit. But, Gundam Breaker 1 still plays well to this day. As long as you're willing to accept a few things. I do have a couple of problems with it though. The main one being the AI teammates go from being kind of useless to in a match like this, incredibly useless. So you have to spend a lot of your healing abilities keeping them up and alive because as you can see up the top there, we've got health bars. So we need to try and keep your, um, our AI teammates alive as long as humanly possible so that you can get most of the kills in. Which means you really do need to carry along one of those heals. And you really do need to carry along a heroic finish so that you can get as much awakening time as humanly possible. Which again just kind of gets in the way of just like having fun with as many silly EX actions as you can stack on top of one another. Still good fun though at the end of the day. If I remember correctly this is the last one. Fun fact, you can actually see how much you've got left to go by pausing. The other games don't do that. Weird thing about the user interface though, see how it says lock off down there? That means press it to turn your lock off, not that your lock on is already off. It's weird that it does that, it's really weird. Oh hang on, let's heal everybody up. Yep, here comes the fun part. These guys are all gold, which means they hurt even more. And the fun part is when you die here, you lose all of your awakening meter. So you might have built up like 90% of your awakening meter only to lose all of it because one got a lucky hit and you didn't have time to heal. But again, as I said, you can keep all the parts you get and you don't even... Uh, do you lose them if you die in this? I'm pretty sure you don't. Because they kind of expect you to die. Because all of these guys are super strong. Oh yeah, right. I can't heal up Dark Rage. Why did he call himself that? That guy there whose name is Double O. I don't really pay that close attention to what the AI teammates are or do in this game. But one of my favorite quotes from um, a Gundam Breaker 1 wiki that I was looking up was that he never stops uh, quoting Gundam 00 lines. <laughs> Which seems like the sort of person you'd have along on this sort of game. There's a sort of random teammate you might have. It's funny. Yep. I had my awakening, I was tapping the damn thing, you can see my taps on the screen there, but just couldn't get it out before I got my shit kicked in. Bloody unfortunate. See, this one's kinda close. We've lost a lot of people already. I was really trying to get over that small bloody hill there, but I just got my shit kicked in. Break through his shield. There we go. Who's the nearest dead one? There we go. Wow. I have no idea what side swiped me there, but I fucking died. That's why you get your resistances as high as possible, kids. I didn't even grind half the modules I have for this out. I'm still getting floored half the time, but there we go. Must have got lucky with an attack off to the side by one of those dudes. But yep, there's one mission from the high 90s actually completed. We even got a couple of modules out of the deal. Although the purple ones are never really that great. Oh yeah, there are also a couple of other things I haven't mentioned, like... Um, 
you actually your ace points actually unlock stuff but it's decals for individual suits pieces so like if you finish mission 20 uh mission 98 i should say above the goal that it sets you get a series of parts to use for your for the gundam double x i think it was you know like really high ones like that we're not actually doing another mission but yeah gundam breaker one was a really good game it did a lot of things different it's clearly the seed being planted for something much more special to come later on but it's still a really good diablo-esque hack and slasher but you can take parts of giant robots and slap them on your own giant robot i hope you appreciated this quick look back at gundam breaker next episode we'll be back to the regular grind this has been blue maxima i'll see you all next time